Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, Genesis chapter 8, verse 2, and Hebrews chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for opening the windows of heaven to us. Lord God, opening the door, opening the gate, Lord God, and letting us in. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins, Lord Jesus. Help us to stay in right standing with you. We know the hour is late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, where are you? All right, and so this is speaking about, you know, the fact of, Abraham, I'm not Abraham, Adam, um, and, and wondering where he is, right? God has created this great situation for him and he's MIA, right? He's not in the place that he's supposed to be in. He's hiding. He's hiding because he's ashamed and he's ashamed because he has sinned. And so, um, it's not that sin can't be restored, but certain sins, can have a horrible repercussions right and I mean to the point of it's not that it's irreparable but the damage that is done in that 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 disobedience is it's going to take a long time to repair so you know God can do a quick work God can God can do quick things in in time but when God has let you know to do something and he's telling you and he's warning you and you you mess up sometimes the mess up can can be bigger than than just the small what seems like a small action And so um, here, you know, Adam, God called out to Adam, right? He was supposed to be in a certain place, but he wasn't there. And so um, God knew already when that the damage had been done, right? That that man had had forsaken the command um, that he had given to him, the one command, the one um, rule that he had in the garden had been broken. And so um, the word had not been guarded and and the the vulnerability um, had caused a a great tear, a great distress um, for what once was a beautiful bride, a wise bride, right? And so here, um, the second verse that the Lord gave me was Genesis chapter eight, verse two. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were closed. The rain from heavens was restrained. From the heavens was restrained. All right. And so this is talking about the rain that was falling on top of the ark, right? The rain that had flooded the earth and and, and God had protected his people. He had protected the animals that he wanted to protect. And now the, the danger had passed, right? But he had saved um, the bride who had listened to him, who had been chastened, who had um, worked, right? Um, Moses, I don't know how many years uh, Moses worked on that ark. I think it was like 12 years or something like that. And yeah, it was a long time, a lot of work that had to be done. And he was obedient, right? Him and his sons and their wives were obedient. And um, the the animals were obedient. They did what they were supposed to do and they found safety because they listened at the right time, right? You, there are certain times you don't want to be outside of God. And this is one of them. This is one of them. We need to stay in the gate. We need to stay close to our shepherd. We need to stay close to our father. You don't want to be in a position of where are you when Jesus comes, right? Because when Jesus comes, you know, it, it's a blinking of an eye. It's it's the it's the fastest moment, and then you are dealing with the moment after, right? In, in a moment, in a blink, then you're dealing with the moment after, right? So here, 
even though um, for for Noah and all of them that were in the ark, the the water shutting off, the heavens closing was a good thing. Um, as it relates in this conflation, you don't want the heavens to close up on you, right? Um, when when the ark is gone and and the people are gone and the heavens are closed, then that means that it the damage is done right? The damage has already been done. And so it says the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained. So that's symbolic, right? Because if you, if you think about it, the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven being open spiritually it is is talking about you know god's presence being on the earth god's god's hand resting on the earth it says the rains from heaven were restrained right so if, if before the rains were not restrained means that the the water the quenching of the earth was there right the 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 spirit of God move freely, right? And so when it's closed in this conflation, that means the spirit is gone. All of that is closed up. Everything is said, everything is done. The damage is done. The door is shut. You don't want to be a bride who gets the door shut on them. You don't want to be a, a person who who is not able to any longer hear the voice of God. God is letting his bride know now. He's letting the unwise bride know. He's letting the bride know. He's letting those who don't believe know. Now is the time. Where are you? Where are you? Right? It says the fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were closed. The rain from the heavens was restrained. So all of the damage had been done. All of the the gates were closed. The ark was all had already been sealed up. They were gone, right? And so God is letting us know that moment is soon to come. The third scripture that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter four, verse 11 and 12. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. All right, and so... The Lord is showing us here that, you know, um, we, I'm, I'm just going from verse 11 first, and then I'll speak on 12. Um, we need to be running that race until the last moment, right? Don't let God have to ask, where are you? Right. You need to be running your race. You need to be telling people about him. You need to be putting one foot in front of the other, even if it's hard right? It says, let us therefore strive. That means we need to be pressing in, running, listening for his voice, listening for the voice of Holy Spirit to tell us what the next move is. It says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. That rest is the place beyond. That rest is that closed ark. That rest is on the other side, right? It says to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. So what is that disobedience? That disobedience was speaking of the children of Israel and how they were steeped in idolatry which is the order of the day for for the people today, right? It is idolatry. Idolatry is everywhere, you guys. It is the clothes. It is the money. It is the jewelry. It is the living your best life. It's the Twitter. It's the Facebook. What? Pick an idol, right? Pick which one. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, you, there are so many idols today and and that's what caused the people to be led astray in disobedience they think it's just a light thing it's just a it's no big deal but when God is calling your name and you're hardening your heart to his calling because you are choosing your own way then that is disobedience when you know what the right thing is to do and you fail to do it that is sin right let God be your lead. Let God be your guide. So, and, and he died once for all sin, right? So um, the thing is, when he died once for all sin, that was for the people who made him Lord, 
right? He he died once for all sin for everybody, but it was only the people who who believed, who had faith to believe in him. And and remember, faith without works is dead. That is not dead faith. We're talking about real faith, faith that that lives that life of lordship. And so if if you um made him Lord, then you could you could receive that once for all sin he died, right? But when you are choosing your own way, when you are choosing a path that is not of lordship, then God is asking, Where are you? Where are you? Right? You have you fallen away from the Lordship? Because he's the one who's guiding you and leading you and telling you what's the next step, not you. Right. And so it says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest. He's saying, stay in the race, y'all, until the race is done. The race is not done until he says it's over. And and, and that blinking of an eye occurs or death. Right. It says, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God sees it, you guys. He knows it, and it is revealed in his word. It says the word of God is living and active. That means that when we read this word, it is not just um, supposed to be on the outside, like, oh, that looks so good, right? No, it gets down deep inside of us. It it penetrates our heart. We're supposed to allow it to get into our mind. If you allow it in, it's going to do some cutting, right? And cutting is not comfortable, right? Especially when you're not under anesthesia, <laughs> So God is is all this spiritual anesthesia we need, but he, when he cuts, sometimes he may tell you to get rid of something that is uncomfortable. Sometimes he may tell you to do something that is uncomfortable, but God, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when you keep coming back to the cut, He's going to keep on cutting and he's going to be rewarding you left and right, left and right, left and right. He is going to be putting so much into your heavenly treasury. He is going to put so much into that, that thing, that, that city to come that you are looking forward to. Why? Because you're letting his word cut you. You're letting him, him prune you and make you better. And you're running faster and you're working harder and you're doing more laps and more laps. And he's building you up and making you greater and then putting more into you and cutting more off of you. That's what the best trees are. They are the trees that were cut, right? They were the trees that were pruned early in the beginnings, cutting things away that God is not pleased with. It says, though, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit. So he's he's dividing away your nephesh, your flesh, away from what is of spirit, of, of life, of eternity. And he's cutting away the things that don't need you don't need, the things that are weighing you down, the things that are not real right? He's cutting away the things that he hates. He's adding in some things that he loves. He's making you love what he loves and hate what he hates. I was listening to um, um, one of the youth ministers, Minister Eliza, and she was speaking about the fact that you know, when she realized that God had um was doing something in her because she had asked God, she said, God, I'm tired of the same old, same old. She's like, I need some new, I need some more of you. I want something deeper. And God began to deal with her. And then she said, it wasn't just that, you know, she loved the things that God hated or that she hated the things that God loved. It said that she had so many things that were right in the middle, right? And the middle belongs to the enemy. Right. So she was saying it was that middle stuff. It was that stuff that she didn't want to make a decision on. It was the stuff that, you know, the world, you know, it, it wasn't that she was against it. It wasn't that she was for it. She was just right in the middle. 
God is saying that his word can come in and divide the, the soul and the spirit, right? So that thing that is, is keeping you right there in the middle that's in your flesh and the thing that's trying to pull you to God that's in your spirit and it's keeping you right in the middle. God is saying that you are are, um, a spirit being. He wants you to be of the spirit. He wants you to love the things that he loves and hate the things that he hates. Allow his word to get into you. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit. Two-edged sword meaning it's cut and going in, it's cut and going out. The top is sharp and the bottom is sharp, right? It, it's going to do its work. If you get into the word, the word has no choice but to get into you. Let the ground be good because the word is coming, right? Let the ground be opened up because the word is coming. It will be planted in you. Hallelujah. Receive that word. It says sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow. So meaning the things that connect together and also the things that give a life. The marrow gives life. Right. So so God is going to question your motives, the things that are in the deepest parts of you, the part of you that feeds the part of you that feeds the you. Right. He's going to get all the way down into that thing, that thing that sustains your life. Right. The thing that keeps you going, God is going to get all the way down in there. And he's also going to get that joint, the thing that helps you move. Right. The thing that slides the thing that helps you to operate. The word goes there. Right. The word goes there. It says and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So when you sin and then and God shows you you sin and you realize I didn't even mean to do that. God knows. He knows. He's merciful. And he even knows when you tried to do that and you saw that it was a slip up and you knew that it was a slip up and you ran and jumped right in it. He knows that too. And he has enough forgiveness for both, but he wants you to let his word get down in you. Do some work. Allow Holy Spirit to get down in you. Do some work. Where are you? The Lord is asking, where are you? Right? You don't want to be sitting, looking up at the windows of heaven, waiting for him to come get you. And the windows of heaven are closed up because you refuse the unction of the spirit. You refuse the word. You harden your heart in the last days. You fatten your heart um, for slaughter. You, you, you are living in the last days and storing up treasure. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let the word get down in you. Let Jesus get down in you. Let Holy Spirit get down in you and come out of your hiding place, Adam. Come out of the place that you're, you're using to cover up the sin that, that, that easily besets man, right? And, and you're making it worse because you're refusing to deal with it. Don't wait till the moment after. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for instilling in us truth, instilling in us hope. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. God, write your name on us, Jesus. Write your name on our heart, Lord God. Help us to have the name of the new Jerusalem on us, Lord God. Help us to live in you and not come out. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins, Jesus. Help us to walk uprightly with you and not hide from you. In Jesus' name, when we fall, God, help us to get back up run. And run quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Lord, don't let us be out of you in that hour when you come, God. Let us be all in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, if there is anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Also, um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out and find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. Also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.